sure you've been reading about this case, uh, Rachel Canning, the 18-year-old the kid who's suing her parents. I mean, she seems like super brat, and she's sitting there in court looking very smug, and there are various lawyers, I see, making lots of money out of this. Her parents, and he's a former chief of police locally, the father, she accused at one point the father of sexually abusing her. That apparently was just a, a wild accusation. The judge has already said, how could you act in such a way? But the case continues. Ah, family life. Dr. Audrey Wise, family and child counselor, joins us from Montreal. Th th is this unprecedented, such a case as this? Well, I've never heard of this kind of case before, so stay tuned for the details, but it is quite extreme because my understanding is that, relatively speaking, the family got along more or less. We don't know all the details. We can speculate, but all of a sudden she decided to bolt from her family home, which is somewhat extreme, and it's really a pity for her, Michael, because she's about to graduate. Now, we know that adolescence is a time of crisis, and one month you're living with your parents and being told what to do to a certain degree because that's what a parent's job is all about and then suddenly you're off to college and you're on your own so there is a bit of conflict there you know and it is um it, it's just a stressful time for everyone but mm. having said that that this is a bit extreme because she's not really serving her own interests in the long term and we know that it's the parents job to love children to care for them to console them to do anything to get them out of a jam and to really educate them but I Based on what I've read about this case, I can understand in this case where the parents are coming from, but we do have to remember that there must have been conflict in the home for quite some time. Well, I assume so. I mean, she's asking them for, to pay for her private school. She's in a private school right now. And, That's and right. She, I mean, she, she ran out of the home. That People are saying, who know the family, they are saying that they always were convinced it was a very good and, and close and quite loving family. There are lots of photographs of them together on, on, on vacation. The father seems to have been close. For her to allege that she was sexually abused by her father, I mean, that, that's, that's more than teenage angst and anger. That's really quite revolting. It's quite... It, it, it's actually very sad because chances are the, these are the two people in the world who love her the most and will still, when all is said and done, do everything for her. Not only um, financially support her, but really take care of her and really have her true interests at heart. And these are the two people that she's antagonizing and alienating mm. herself from. I mean, she's basically separated herself from the people who care about her the most. I mean, the people that she's staying with may be lovely people, but I don't think they're ready to take her on as their child for life. And many of the professionals that are involved in her life now are professionals. It's another case, as caring and as professional as they may be. Let's mm. get real. It's still another case on their roster. Yeah, I wonder if the people she's staying with are actually so tremendous, because it's one thing to say, <laughs> OK, you can sleep here, but the, the first thing I'm doing, I'm calling your parents, you've got to meet with them, and then you try and speak to the kid and dissuade her from taking her real parents to court. So I'm not sure what sort of people are. Let's go beyond this case, because this is sensational and absurd and, in, and American in the, wor in the worst form, and, and the lawyers, I think, are being very exploitative here. But when, when kids, and as you say, kids can be stroppy at a certain age, how credulous do the police and the authorities have to be? I mean, do they have the, the, the authority to say, we don't believe you, you're being a pain, go home, we're not dealing with this case? Because I suppose their hands are tied. Well, in this case, you, you know, you made reference, Michael, to the fact that she said that she was abused. There hadn't been any abuse before. I don't, th you know, we don't believe it, obviously, but it's, it's not as if suddenly the father one day at age 16 or 17 started to abuse her. Presumably, there, there would have been a pattern of abuse. This girl also has siblings. And my understanding is that the siblings seem to be functioning well and they all get along. So why is this all of a sudden happening? If something terrible had been happening, it probably had been going on for a long time. My, my assessment, and I can only speculate because I haven't met with the family, is that she wanted a little bit more leeway. I mean, let's face it, kids want their freedom. She wanted to go out with her boyfriend, not um, do whatever household chores were assigned to her, stay out with her boyfriend later than her parents approved of. And I think that was probably the crowning touch. Mm. Well, I, again, it's entirely natural for a child to be uh, slightly ill at ease in their own body, in their home, with their parents. I mean, when I was a teenager, <laughs> I, 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 my parents, they embarrassed me. I mean, I, I hate to admit this because they're both gone now and they were <laughs> lovely people, but I, I was embarrassed by them, which, which is an appalling thing to say, but, it, but it's true. Well, but you, it's... you grow through that, though. You, you, you don't run away and call the police and take them to the court, for, for goodness you know, sake. It... 
it's an appalling thing for you to say, Michael, but in fact, it's a very normal and natural thing. Many kids are embarrassed by their parents. They're old fashioned. They don't speak right. They speak correctly, excuse me. They're not with it. They're not, they're not in touch with modern technology, whatever it is. A lot of kids just cringe if their parents, you know, want to meet their, ki their friends. But having said that, these sound like people who were really caring for their children. And let's face it, they presumably put her in this good school because they had great hopes for her and great ambitions for her. Well, and maybe. Of course, there are, um, there are people who put their kids in private school, not because they love them, because they're very wealthy <laughs> and they don't really want to raise them themselves. So, I mean, there, there can be other motivations going on there. Well, in Miss Canning's defense, they say that she was a good student. But having said that, we don't hear about scholarship offers coming in, which we don't hold against her. But she obviously is a good student, and ideally, it's not in her interest. What she should be doing now is planning her future and not being busy with court depositions and what all the other things that you have to do when you're, when you're busy suing people, let alone your parents. I mean, she's meeting with lawyers, going to court. That's not what teenagers, 16- and 17-year-olds, should be busy with. They should be busy with their activities, whether sports, schoolwork, piano, whatever it is, not being busy with courtroom procedure. You know, I don't even care that much if, if they're busy with just having fun and, and going out to, to behave like this. <laughs> and, and there should be, I, I really believe there should be a higher threshold within the legal profession for a lawyer to pick this case up, the money it would cost, the, 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 I mean, I, I would think that the damage is irreparable now. How can the parents ever really trust and love and forgive? Maybe, but it, it'll take a wonderful counsel like, or well, someone like you, I suppose, to, to put it all together. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Always good to see you.